Good morning. This is Teresa with Teresa's Treasures Ministry, and I hope you have your Bible or your Bible app. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about Acts 18. Um, let's pray, and we're going to speak about some things. And just remember, he that the Son is set free is free indeed. So you're not bound anyway. Nobody can take the Holy Ghost away from you. Nobody can uh, tell you that Jesus isn't real because he is. That's an antichrist spirit. Uh, the, the people are denying the power thereof. And the Bible says from such turn away. Don't argue with them. Don't contend with Just turn away from them because they don't know what they're talking about. Because just because people say that the that Jesus isn't real or that the Holy Ghost isn't real doesn't mean it's so. I mean, my Lord, we've watched for the last three years, four years, probably 12 years, how we've been lied to and everything by social media and media and all these things. But the Bible's true. So I don't care about what they say out there, but what the Bible says is true. So Acts 18 and 5, let's look. At what the Bible says, it is written, and we're not supposed to change any word, add to or take away from it. And people are all caught up in, well, there's other books. Yeah, there is. But that's not my business. My business is to stay focused on what God has told me to read. And his name is Jesus. Printed out in English, Jesus. I don't know what all other people call him. I, it's Jesus. His name is Jesus. And so let's pray. Lord God, we love you and we thank you and we glorify you. There's nothing that you can't do, God, and you do it well. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you. And I thank you, Lord God, that you woke us up two and a half years ago to be bold in the spirit, Lord God. Lift up my voice to you, Lord. I love you and I praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Standing up. Okay, so people, <laughs> so we've had people tell us, you know, you don't need to be so involved in uh, politics and you don't need to be so involved in this and when you don't need to be so involved in that. Well, let me tell you what that has caused. That has caused the government that we are sitting under right now. Don't be involved. Okay, well, here's what we got from complacency. Not good, people. So we're going to talk about the Bible. Acts 18 and 5. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. He told them the truth about Jesus. Okay. And when they opposed him, they didn't believe themselves and blasphemed. They even cussed about it. Cussed him out. Cussed, told him that he was a liar and everything. Okay. He shook his remnant. He stopped. Okay. Okay. You're not going to believe. You don't. You, you don't get it. You're blind and you're deaf. And said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. So now I'm going to go to other people. Because you who Jesus died for, the Jewish people, for your salvation, you don't believe me. Okay, I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm going to get out. I didn't come just for you, but I came to tell you first. And here's Paul, a very educated man, a very known man, uh, for good and bad. I mean, like he was killing the Christians, and God converted him. The Spirit of God did that. So Paul is very well aware of what the Spirit of God is. He's not telling them something that he hasn't experienced his own self. Okay? My husband and I, I got filled with the Holy Ghost in 91, and Steve got filled with the Holy Ghost in 96. I was in church five years before Steve came in. But in that time, in that process of that five years, uh, my husband would come to church and visit and everything, and uh, God got a hold of him. I didn't. God did. It's not my business to change somebody, but it is my business to tell them about salvation. That's, about, that's what it's talking about, the blood, the blood of Jesus. At Watchmen on the Wall, if you're not telling people that I'm coming, then their blood is on your hands. But you telling them that I'm coming, and when I come, I'm judging, They're good, and he's going to judge us by our deeds. So whatever's coming out of your mouth, whatever you're doing with your physical body, these things are going to be judged. That's, that's what God does, because he gave you a choice. He gave you a choice to live for him by his grace and mercy, by the, the cross, dying on the cross, shedding his blood resurrecting himself from the dead. 
I mean, think about that. I mean, that is powerful, resurrecting himself from the dead. Because why? Because he's God in the flesh. That is so cool to me. God didn't send a son to do it. He is the son. He is God. He is God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Oh, my God. You're everything, Lord. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Seven. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. So he was very in, entrenched in the synagogue. And Cyprus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all of his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. See, I've got a God's telling him, I've got a bunch of people here, and you don't even know what the people that I have here. And some of these people that don't believe, but there's a lot of believers. You just wait and see. I'm going to show them to you. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And then when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to, judge, to the judgment seat. So they created an uproar against him. They wanted to, to let them see how crazy he was, how insane he was. And Paul said, okay, bring it on, okay? Saying, this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. Yeah, their law. But Jesus was in there. In Isaiah, he talks about. Uh, he talks about a virgin being born. And everything. The prophets prophesied. But these people that were so interested in the synagogue and the law, they didn't even see Jesus. And he, was, and he had been there. And he had changed Paul. Saying, this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. Oh, okay, so here's the law, and here's the you can and you can't do things. You can and you can't do law. Jesus comes in the Spirit. Well, these people so caught up in the law didn't understand the Spirit. So they were saying, Paul, you're teaching something that's contrary to our law. Well, you're correct. It's contrary to your man thinking, but it's not contrary to what the Bible says. So the prophet spoke of it. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill it, to bring about what was to come. Manifest. That's why it says Jesus was manifest in the flesh. So you have your word. Then Jesus is that word, Son and God. One, one God. There's no, ever, not ever been no more gods than one. His name is Jesus. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. And so there's only one Lord. And if we don't tell people about that, then their blood is on our hands. But if we do tell them and they don't believe, their blood is not on our hands. Dust your feet off. Uh, don't argue with them because this isn't about that. This word is not about that. And you can't use your wor the word to uh, justify your wickedness. I mean, even this, even Paul, when he was about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, if this guy has done something lewd, if he's done something physically, you know, against the law, O oh, ye Jews, so you're trying to set him up, take him out, because he doesn't agree with your laws. And your rules. And he's saying, reason what would that I should bear with you. I'm not going with your spiritual thing. This, If he's broken the law, I'll deal with him. But because it's spiritual and y'all are trying to set this man up, I'm not going to do nothing with it. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will not judge of such matters. I'm not judging that because you can't judge that. That's your rules. That's your uh, things that you say have to be done. But the Bible talks specifically about those same people, those people that are trying to kill Paul here uh, and trying to set him up. Those people make so many laws that the stranger 
and the unbeliever can't even get in the door. They make them do more wickedness than what they're doing because they're not telling them the right thing. They're not showing them how to live. They're giving them over 600 rules and laws, and they're saying, you need to live by that. Well, my Lord, we none of us can live by that. That's why Jesus came. Mercy and grace. Remember, mercy and grace. Repent. That's what Jesus said. You got to repent. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sonethus, though the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence to Syria, and with his and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centuria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into a synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must be by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. Paul was about his father's business, doing what he was supposed to be doing. God is such a good God. And when he tells his servants to do something and they don't do it, it's, it's not, I don't want to be in the hands of an angry God. What I mean is when God tells you to do something, when he wakes you up and he gives you something to do, a project or, or something that he wants you to do two and a half years ago, I want everybody to listen to that two and a half years ago. Go back two and a half years ago and see what happened in your life. If you're awake Go back and see what happened in your life. Jesus has done something like, I don't know, in the spirit realm where we have crossed over into another level. And it's not even a, it's not even stopped. It's go, you're going to get more bolder, more bolder, bold as a lion, bolder, bolder. Because why? Because Jesus is coming back and complacency is not going to get us to heaven. Sitting down on the pew is not going to get us to heaven. We must work while we still have light because darkness is coming. I love you. And something that uh, Steve and I have done, uh, Steve just got a new present and he uh, wants to show y'all what his present is. Hello, viewers. Got me a new shofar and I want to blow it because the shofar uh, is, is what the Jewish people blow for victory. And we're fixing to have victory in this nation. In Jesus' name. Okay, bear with me. I just got this a couple of days ago. I'll blow it the best I can. Victory. Victory for our nation. Victory for our God. Get him, God. Get him. So here we are, we're learning new things, doing new things, God's opening doors, and we love each and every one of y'all. We have so many friends, so many friends that we talk to every day, so many friends that, that watch these videos, that don't watch these videos. That's not my deal. My deal is God said, do these videos, and he would take care of the rest. I don't know. All I know is that God is in control, and we are not. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you and we thank you and we glorify you. Lord, the enemy is a Psalms 94 house. The righteous are a Psalms 91 house. God, get them. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day.